What if your value in society could be quantified? Imagine a world where every trait of your being could be ranked on a scale from 1 to 10. Intelligence, strength, health, appearance, and even a projected lifespan. You might be ambitious and a diligent worker, but your intelligence is only at a 7, and your dream job requires a minimum score of 8. Are you lesser than a candidate whose intelligence is one point higher, but lacks the same drive and ambition as yourself? Maybe your intelligence is a 9, but your lifespan is projected to be rather short, and employers deem you as an unworthy investment. Must you relinquish your right to the same quality of life afforded by your peers simply because they might live longer? What happens when science advances to the point where children being born can be genetically edited to meet these qualifications? Moreover, what happens to the children who are born outside of this eugenic process? These questions set up the dystopian premise of 1997's Gattaca. At a time when alien invasions ruled the sci-fi genre, Gattaca emerged as a noticeably quieter take on what the future may hold in store for the human race. The story sets up a world where the genetically superior, known as Valids, have a world of opportunity, whereas those who are born naturally, known as Invalids, are barred from being part of society in any meaningful way. Though it did not enjoy the same financial success of its blockbuster contemporaries, Gattaca may be one of the most important sci-fi films to come from the 1990s. Falling squarely into the category of hard sci-fi, director Andrew Nichol weaves a narrative that raises issues of determinism and discrimination while establishing a grounded sense of familiarity. The film, in fact, is so well-grounded that in 2011, NASA ranked it number one in a list of most plausible sci-fi films. Gattaca's enduring legacy as a sci-fi classic is owed to the use of established scientific logic, a creative use of setting, and a familiar story of class struggle. Generally, most works of science fiction will fall into one of two categories, hard science fiction and soft science fiction. Hard sci-fi tends to play by the rules of what is currently known or theorized, while soft science fiction takes more liberties with these rules. Examples of hard sci-fi include Moon, Ex Machina, The Andromeda Strain, and Children of Men. Soft sci-fi, on the other hand, includes Doom, Star Trek, The Fifth Element, and even stories that border on fantasy such as Star Wars. While there is plenty of debate and a few gray areas about what makes something hard sci-fi, soft sci-fi, or even sci-fi at all, a general rule is the closer it is to a conceivable reality, the closer it is to hard sci-fi. A conceivable reality is exactly what Gattaca aims for with an emphasis on the future of genetic engineering using principles of the time. To understand how Gattaca borrows from real-world science, it is helpful to capture a brief snapshot of what was known about genetics at the time of the film's release in 1997. The modern study of genetics and biology can be said to have started back in 1953 when Francis Crick and James Watson discovered the double helix DNA structure with the help of X-ray diffraction expert Rosalind Franklin. By 1972, recombinant DNA had been created, a process which essentially combines elements of DNA from different organisms. This discovery paved the way for the first genetically engineered drug for human consumption to hit the market in 1982, synthetic insulin. This was followed up shortly in 1986 with the hepatitis B vaccine being the first recombinant vaccine approved for humans. Then came the 1990s and the start of the Human Genome Project with the end goal of identifying and mapping all of the genes in the human genome. Completed in 2003, it remains the world's largest collaborative biological project. During that period, in 1993, is when Francisco Mojica discovered the principles of CRISPR, clustered, regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, which opened the door to exploring technology that could edit the genomes of bacteria, humans, and everything in between. Though there have been plenty of advancements since then, including recently approved human trials for CRISPR gene editing treatments, these 20th century discoveries alone were enough for Andrew Nichol to imagine a world where gene editing became the norm. Even the title of the film is rooted in science, being based on the letters G, A, T, and C, which correspond with the four nucleobases of DNA. 
Going hand in hand with an appeal to contemporary science is the effective use of setting. Andrew Nichol was inspired by modernist architecture featuring two prominent works in Gattaca, the Marin County Civic Center designed by Frank Lloyd Wright and the CLA building designed by Antoine Predock. Both buildings were designed with differing philosophies and are likewise used in the film to represent differing lifestyles. The Marin County Civic Center, built in 1960, was Frank Lloyd Wright's last commission before his death in 1959. Even in his old age, Wright was not only responsible for the architecture, but also designed nearly every single detail including the doors, signage, furniture, and more. The architect's philosophy regarding an organic architecture that emphasizes connection to nature can be seen through the horizontality of the structure that ties neatly into the landscape and the large atrium spaces that grow wider with each level and bathe the interior in natural light. The building feels as if it belongs in its environment. In Gattaca, it is used as the aerospace headquarters, a place where only the genetically superior valids can gain meaningful employment. This use of setting cleverly reinforces the idea that in this new world only the valids truly fit into society, just as the building they occupy fits within the physical landscape. The other prominent work, the CLA building, completed in 1993 and designed by Antoine Predock, was created as an icon to stand apart from the landscape and surrounding context on the Cal Poly Pomona campus. Its unique triangular footprint and aggressive peak piercing the sky atop its eight stories make it easily the most recognizable building in the surrounding area. In Gattaca, the exterior of the building is used to show where the main character Vincent Freeman lives as an invalid. Similar to how the building he occupies does not belong to the natural landscape, Vincent does not belong to the now genetically superior world. Along with these structures anchoring the story are plenty of motifs, symbolism, and imagery that reinforce the themes of the movie. Jerome's spiral staircase represents the double helix DNA structure. The clothing worn by invalids is drab in stark contrast to the ultra-modern suits inspired by mid-century fashion worn by the valids. Imagery of trash is used often in close proximity to the invalids, while cleanliness is associated with the valids. Furthermore, Vincent embodies these two concepts with his meticulous ritual of cleaning away loose skin and hair to avoid leaving evidence of his true identity while he attempts to pass himself off as a valid member of society. A good film often forces viewers to ask questions, and Gattaca succeeds in this arena twofold. A sense of tangible realism allows Gattaca to address the hard sciences through a narrative that also appeals to the social sciences. The film argues that hard and soft science are intrinsically tied to one another. Just as the internet changed social dynamics globally, a massive advancement in genetic engineering carries the same potential. The journey of Vincent Freeman is just one of these examples. Vincent was born naturally instead of through a eugenic process. He is therefore more susceptible to illness, has poor eyesight, and has a heart condition that gives him a higher chance of dying young. Invalids like Vincent run into more closed doors than their valid counterparts. They are often relegated to lower paying jobs, differing educational treatment, and they even have a harder time dating since couples have a habit of checking each other's DNA before committing to a relationship. These are all key components in a traditional story of class struggle. Although, as Vincent remarks, instead of racism or social status, the future has discrimination down to a science. However, Gattaca also explores the follies of perfection and how valids, despite their superiority, often suffer faults owed to their place in society. For example, Jerome Morrow was genetically engineered to be a champion athlete. After winning silver instead of gold, he breaks down and attempts suicide. When he is instead crippled, he sells his genetic profile for Vincent to use as his own. Jerome's worldview was shattered by not living up to his genetic profile. Although, Jerome finds a new sense of purpose in helping Vincent overcome his plight throughout the film. Then there is Irene, who despite being a valid, suffers with a slight enough heart defect that she is barred from advancing beyond her current position. There is also a moment where Dr. Lamar, the man in charge of background checks, reveals that gene editing didn't work as planned for his son. As a result, his son looks up to Vincent as an example of an invalid who found a way to live his dream. 
Lastly, there is the case of Anton Freeman, Vincent's younger brother who was conceived through genetic selection. As children, they would swim against each other at the beach to see how far they could go from shore until one of them got too tired or scared. Anton, being genetically superior, would win all but one time. As an adult, Anton refuses to believe that Vincent is capable of everything he has achieved. Gattaca was promoted with the tagline, There is no gene for the human spirit. So when the brothers swim against each other one last time, Vincent reaffirms this statement as Anton asks in bewilderment how he has come this far. You want to know how I did it? This is how I did it, Anton. I never saved anything for the swim back. Anton is astonished in defeat because he never had to try hard to succeed, but Vincent's success comes from pure determination. While willpower and determination alone are not likely to fix the world's problems, Gattaca serves to remind viewers that we are more than our genetic identity. Gattaca's effectiveness at blurring the line between fiction and reality is at the core of its appeal. While the film was praised by critics as a work of art, it also left an impact on the world of genetics, with Princeton microbiologist Lee M. Silver suggesting that all geneticists should watch it to understand public perception of their field. Gattaca, and many works like it, may have even had an impact on Congress when the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act was finally passed in 2008 after the first version of the bill had been introduced in 1995. At the very least, Gattaca is an ode to humanity, a testament to the immeasurable. In a world ruled by numbers and information, the one thing that can never be quantified is the human spirit. As Vincent ascends toward space, away from the world that can find him, viewers may find hope that they too could surpass their own barriers and truly be free. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more content. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below and let me know if there are any films you love that I should take a look at.